Far Cry New Dawn. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words of the developer. Drive into a transformed, vibrant, post-apocalyptic Hope County, Montana, 17 years after the global nuclear catastrophe. Lead the fight against the highwaymen as they seek to take over the last remaining resources. I do apologise, guys. It's taken us a while to get this review out. It could have gone out last night. I was playing it till 5 o'clock in the morning. I didn't get a review key. You see, Ubisoft wouldn't even reply to me email. It's it's sad, but they, they don't like giving me keys because I'm too brutal. Um, so I do apologise for how long it's took. I could have had it out last night, but I needed to do more because I just wasn't satisfied that I'd done enough. I mean, I finished the story in nine hours, um, but I wanted to do all the outposts a few times to get them up to the maximum levels. I wanted to do all of the expeditions. So it took me a while to do that, but now I kind of know the game inside out. It runs really, really well on the PC. There's uh, no mouse lag at all. There's no graphic frame drops or anything. It's, it's fantastic. There are shit tons of options as well to change if your PC is struggling with some of the, the uh, graphics in this game. And the graphics do look fantastic. There's also a fob slider, which is what should always be in a first person shooter. So that's great. Um, but one of the best things is you can customize your hood completely. And guys, you should spend some time in here changing all these options because if you play it with the tags on and the X revision, trust me, just trust. I know you might be thinking, oh, Max, stop being the elitist. Oh, you think you're good because, you know, no, it's nothing to do with that. Look, I've had my ass handed to me plenty in this game because I didn't see the enemies coming. But, you know, you really should try the game with all the the hood shit off i mean you have to leave some of it on so you can see the the, the missions to make the missions um less frustrating but as far as the combat goes um the only thing i have on is where the the direction the damage is coming from i'm a pussy i leave that on but i switch all x-ray vision off and it is so much better the battles are so damn immersive most of the time the audio is fantastic i'm going to give the sound effects for this game a literal a 10 out of 10 guys it is just the guns, the meatiness of the guns. My goodness. It is just incredible, the sound in this game. Fantastic. The, the voiceovers is good as well. They have found the most annoying voiceovers to go with the annoying characters in this game. So that, again, is 10 out of 10. It really does make you hate the f***ing characters. I'm not talking about the enemies. I'm talking about the people on your side. You want to kill every one of the little f***ers. It also has streamer mode, this, which is great, because it'll turn off all licensed music in the game. So if you're streaming or if you're doing videos, hey, you don't get copyright straight. Anyway, let's get into the main thing, the game. How does it play? Well, you play this role of this um, unvoiced guy who lives in prosperity. You can customize your character, uh, man or woman, and you can change their outfits and stuff like that. Now, prosperity is where people are trying to rebuild their lives 17 years after the nuclear war. And it's pretty much rudimentary stuff. You're using bow and arrows and shit like that, cobbling together guns with duct tape and stuff. And you can go out into the open world and do missions and bring specialists back to your base in prosperity. And they will open little shops. There'll be a cartographer selling your maps. There'll be a weapon place where you can upgrade your weapons. And the weapons are all tiered now. Grey being shit, blue being a bit better, purple being very, very good and yellow just being elite and epic, you know? So it's important that you have all these people back in your base with the little medical shops, which help uh, give you better first aid kits. There's a, a hospital you can set up that give you more hit points. You need to have these all in your base and then you need to upgrade them all. You upgrade them by getting a, a, a material called ethanol. You can only get it from outposts, capturing outposts. And when you do capture an outpost like you do in any Far Cry game, in this one, you can actually hand it back to the enemy they will reinforce it with even better defenses and they will also switch around where the alarms is located which is really neat so you can attack the same base twice and the alarms will be in different positions when you when you change the, the difficulty of it and you can upgrade the, the outposts three times that's why the game's advertised as having 30 outposts it doesn't really it has 10 but you can upgrade each one three times 10 threes is 30 and each time you upgrade it they get harder and harder but the reward is bigger and so it's well worth doing but it fills the base with yellow armored people and that's when i was saying about the weapons the weapons start with gray and go through to yellow so do people so you will fight people who have grey armour, blue armour, pink armour or purple armour, whatever it is, and then yellow armour. And obviously if you're firing a blue weapon at um, yellow armour, forget it. He will own your ass. 
So that's the basics of, of how the game plays. What's the story like? Well, the story is abysmal, absolutely abysmal. The entire game is absolutely abysmal from the actual story perspective. The story itself is about nine hours long and you are facing these antagonists, these two girls, who you see at the beginning once after about halfway and then right at the end when you absolutely have to fight them to the death. And that's all. Honestly, you'll forget you're even fighting them when you're playing the game. They are hardly ever in it. And that's a good thing because the shit. They are absolutely horrible people. Not in scary, it's just awful. It's almost like Ubisoft have seen the game and just thought, you know what? This game's f***ing shite. We're just going to get trolled off everybody. Look, just troll them back. These are the antagonists. I know, they look ridiculous. They look like two chicks who do motocross. They're going to be, the hardly vass, you know. The actual story around them is just f***ing awful. Really, is Joseph Seed, who shit anyway, he's in this, and he's shite in this. He's just terrible in this, as is what's left of his f***ing family. The whole story is awful. The boss fights, fighting bears where you have to shoot their f***ing red belly underneath when they stand up and go, Ugh! It's just tragic. The end boss fight is just a f***ing joke. An absolute f***ing joke, guys. Doesn't belong in this game whatsoever. It's, trust me, it's f***ing awful, guys. As are the characters. The characters in this, they just annoy the hell out of you. Everybody, especially the people on your side. I mean, it's bad enough fighting the f***ing clowns of the, the two sisters who should be called f***ing Eno and Beano, but you've got these assistants that will fight for you, you know, on the roster, and they are just so damn annoying. There's this millennial girl who just is awful. When she's on the machine gun, all she does is go, nah, nah. you know, she's just f***ing, listen to this. Like we she is just so damn annoying. I'd rather play solo with nothing but the fucking dog. Even the dog's annoying, but you know what? At least the dog doesn't talk in all this stupid language. Nobody talks properly in this game. You know, some guy put his knee out of the joint, you know, in a cutscene, and instead of saying, oh, my knee's dislocated, can you pop it back into the joint? It's, he's like, yeah, you're gonna have to jig my zang, and jig my zang, and like, what the f you talking about or whatever the hell he said you know and it's all like i'm gonna go and do a number on him you know what, what you mean you're gonna go and write a number on his back what number six or something what the f are you talking about talk f***ing properly these people are so f***ing annoying they're just arsey they're just f***ing assholes all of them and you know riding around on a pink f***ing trike with rainbows on the side of it it's just ridiculous this game i'm in the middle of a fight and me me ally ai friend comes in in the middle of a gunfight on a f***ing pink f rainbow unicorn trike you know you can dress up in fucking unicorn onesies and all that ubisoft have given up on this they've absolutely it's absolutely trash one out of fucking ten utter utter trash but i'm gonna thumb the game up and there's a good reason that i'm gonna thumb the game up you see i absolutely love this game it is a really fun game to play because you have to look past the story you have to forget the story escape your way through it you know because where this game shines is the upgrading progression path of prosperity when you go out to get materials and you need a lot of materials to craft your weapons as well as the ethanol to upgrade your base and the various shops inside it and that is a purpose you are actually going out there in with with a purpose in far cry 5 you were just going out to liberate and liberate and it was just like yeah yeah whatever this is something different i want that yellow light machine gun it looks awesome i want that awesome sniper rifle i want that kick-ass saw gun and the saw guns in this are the new weapon when you fire it it fires little saw blades all over the place there's two variants of it when you get to the to the final one it's so overpowered i don't like using it to be honest it's so overpowered but you see the weapons that you want and then you say right i'm going out with a purpose to get that fucking weapon and that's good because you have a sense you have a sense of, of purpose now playing this in co-op is the only way to play this game forget single player far cry in co-op is fucking brilliant 
absolutely brilliant. And so I played it most of the time in co-op and had an absolute blast going out uh, scavenging, looting. For, for, there's loot everywhere. They're throwing loot at you left, right and centre. But, you know, you sometimes hit a couple of bottlenecks with, with different pieces of loot and you've got to fight and fight and fight to get it. And the wildlife that inhabit this world is f***ing lethal. The amount of times we got killed by wildlife in the early uh, stages of the game before we got really good weapons and it keeps you on your toes and it's so immersive when you're out in the world away from all the pink unicorn and rainbow trikes and all that when you get out there in the wilderness it's really really good fun the outpost is great fun the gunplay is fantastic when you're taking back the outpost especially when you upgrade them a couple of levels and you're rushing in you've got your mate who's sniping from a distance and you're trying to stealth in to take out all the alarms yes it's the same stuff that you've done in other far cry games but it is so much better in new dawn because the weapons are so much better the whole tiered system is so much better because you will see a guy run around the corner and you're just so used to just filling him full of lead but then you look and you see that this guy is a fucking epic elite guy and you know that he's going to be a lot harder to take down unless you have the right the right equipment the expeditions are even better when you do the expeditions on high level difficulty. My goodness, it is edge of the seat shit. When, when you take the package, you've got like two minutes to escape and they are throwing waves of enemy at you and you've got to wait for the helicopter to land and then jump on it and you have to defend the LZ for sometimes up to a minute and a half. And it is just insane, the amount of shit that's coming down on you. It is just damn, damn good fun. It's just a shame that Ubisoft lack the talented people to be able to put all that together into a, a brilliant game with a great immersive story. Look at the perk system. You've got these new perks at the bottom which you unlock towards the end of the story which turn you into some kind of Superman. I don't even use them because it's so ridiculous. You can double jump 30 feet up in the air. You can pretty much go invisible. You know, it's just, what the f***? You can go have this like superpower mode where you just become super strong you, you become a bullet sponge and you can just punch people to death a couple of punches will take down even the most tough of, of of enemies i mean what's the point of that ubisoft haven't a f***ing clue that's the problem they they're the wrong people to have designed this i hope a lot of developers have a look at this game the base system the progression system the tiered enemies in a first person shooter and they will capitalize on it and make some fantastic games based around this similar progression ubisoft haven't a f***ing clue. I mean, look at the microtransactions in this game. They are everywhere. They are in your face all the time. And this proves just how out of touch Ubisoft are. They haven't a f***ing clue with this. Because what they've done here, what they've actually done is, they've put microtransactions in this game so you can avoid doing the only good things in this game. Such as the, ba the building up of your base, the progression of getting all the materials to get your guns. You can even buy your guns directly. But if you don't want to directly buy your guns, you can buy all the crafting materials to save you going out on expeditions and doing all the fun stuff. It is absolutely laughable. So I'm thumbing this game up, guys. If you can get past the awful story, the awful characters, the pink frickin' unicorn trikes and all that bollocks, there's a really good game underneath this. Best played in co-op. But for me, it's better than Far Cry 5 and definitely worth a buy. I go, but I've got bad knees. <laughs> and lungs. A and eyes. Anyway, please get my business plan back. If you reach around my back now, I'll reach around yours later. That's a Wicca Beanie of promise. <laughs>